Growing up near Hot Springs National Park, I had always heard strange tales from my friends and other hikers about bizarre happenings in the wooded areas. However, I had always considered myself a rational thinker, someone who didn't put much stock in such stories. That all changed a few years ago when I had an encounter that defied all rational explanation. It was a typical day, and I was hiking the Sunset Trail with a couple of close friends. We had covered about two miles into the trail when I noticed some odd movement up ahead. At first, I thought it might be a deer, but as I cautiously moved closer, I realized it was standing upright on two legs. My heart clenched as it turned to face me, revealing that it was definitely not any ordinary animal. Its eyes seemed to glow with an eerie amber-red light, and I was frozen in place. Before I could even take another step, the creature emitted an ungodly scream that sent shivers down my spine. With superhuman speed, it darted back into the brush, disappearing from sight. My friends and I were in shock, frantically speculating about what we had just witnessed. We considered the possibility of a Bigfoot or some supernatural being, but I tried to maintain a level head, convincing myself that it could have been someone in a costume playing a prank on us. Deep down, though, I couldn't deny that what I saw didn't fit the profile of a mere costume. The way it screamed and moved with such grace and fluidity was beyond human capability. The image of that creature haunted me for weeks, and I felt compelled to return to the trail to document any evidence of its existence. One weekend, armed with just my cell phone camera, I ventured back to the Sunset Trail alone. The woods felt unusually quiet that day, and my nerves were on edge. I retraced our exact steps, and about 50 yards off the trail, I encountered a foul odor growing stronger as I approached. In a small clearing, I stumbled upon the half-eaten carcass of a deer, torn in half from the stomach down. It was clear that no ordinary predator could have inflicted such damage. As I examined the carcass, I suddenly felt a menacing presence watching me. I spun around, and the same bone-chilling scream echoed through the woods. My heart raced as I turned to run, but I froze when I realized the creature was standing right behind me, bathed in daylight. It was at least eight feet tall, covered in matted, unkempt hair, and had long, curved claws. Hot, steamy breath escaped its mouth as it crouched, ready to pounce. I knew then that this was no human in a costume. It was something primal and malevolent. It emitted another harrowing scream, and I finally found my legs, crashing through the underbrush, leaping over rocks and logs as it pursued me. Strangely, it kept its distance, almost as if it was chasing me out of its territory. Despite its incredible speed and power, it never closed the gap completely, as if it chose to let me escape. During the chase, I felt a searing pain as its claws raked my shoulder. Panic surged, and I remembered a narrow ravine up ahead. Pushing myself harder, I scrambled into the ravine, and squeezed into a small cave opening halfway down. My chest heaved as the creature stuck its snout into the gap, snapping its jaws just inches from my face. It roared with fury, but the opening was too slim, and after about thirty seconds, it gave up and disappeared. I remained huddled in that tiny cave for hours, shaking uncontrollably, unsure of what awaited me outside. When I finally emerged, dusk had fallen, and I managed to stagger back to the trailhead, bleeding and torn. My friends were shocked by my appearance, but I couldn't reveal the truth. I told them I had taken a nasty fall and was struck by branches. One detail that haunted me most was the creature's amber-red eyes and the putrid odor that seemed to emanate pure evil. I never described it as canine or human-looking. It was more like a massive, broad, and lean figure something that defied categorization. I couldn't help but wonder if it was a primordial missing link, something that didn't belong on Earth. Whatever it was, it lived within the confines of Hot Springs National Park, and I knew I would never step foot near that area again. I am grateful to be alive, but the memory of that encounter will haunt me forever, buried in the depths of the woods. I remember it vividly, 
that chilling weekend camping trip with my cousin Ed at Big Bend National Park. We were setting up our tents at the Chisos Basin campground, the sun descending and casting a fading evening glow over the surrounding mountains. The strange aura in the air seemed to whisper to me, a subtle warning that something abnormal was about to unfold. As we prepared dinner by the campfire, a sense of unease washed over me. I couldn't help but feel unsettled, though I attributed it to the remote wilderness that surrounded us. Darkness began to fall, and with every passing minute, the shadows deepened. As Ed and I sat around the campfire savoring our meal, my cousin suddenly froze in mid-bite. His gaze shifted towards a cluster of towering oak trees roughly fifty yards from our campsite. I followed his line of sight, and was met with a sight that would forever haunt my dreams. Perched atop one of the thicker branches, there stood a humanoid figure, like nothing we had ever seen before. The flickering firelight revealed grotesque, leathery skin that resembled that of a bat. Its face was unnaturally flattened, with sunken-in black eyes that seemed to absorb the very essence of the night. Rows of sharp, glistening teeth protruded from its mouth, visible even from our distance. What horrified me the most were the enormous dark wings that stretched out behind it, like a legendary gargoyle brought to life. Ed's voice trembled as he whispered urgently, There's something over there in that tree, watching us. Tell me you can see it too. I was speechless, my heart pounding in my chest. I followed Ed's frantic gaze, and when my eyes settled on the grotesque creature, I couldn't suppress a sharp intake of breath. We were both now locked in a gaze with this impossible creature, a mere few feet away. Suddenly, as if in response to our gaze, the creature unfurled its massive wings with a deafening rustle, and with a powerful leap, it soared into the night sky. Within seconds, it vanished into the darkness, leaving us in stunned silence. Questions raced through our minds. Why had it been watching us? Was it real? Or had we both succumbed to a shared hallucination? We sat there, paralyzed, trying to process the incomprehensible. We decided to cut our camping trip short, leaving the park the next morning, our shaken minds still unable to grasp the bizarre encounter. Afterward, we scoured cryptozoology websites, desperate for answers. We stumbled upon accounts of flying humanoids, or winged humanoid sightings most notably in places like Chicago and the East Coast. Even now, 12 or 13 years later, Ed and I often revisit that fateful night in conversation. We affirm to each other that we had indeed witnessed the same unearthly being, matching the mythical descriptions with uncanny detail. It was a night that defied all logic, a night when the Texas desert revealed a terror neither of us could have ever imagined. So, dear reader, I leave it to you to decide. Was what we saw real, or did we share a hallucination born from the desolation of that remote wilderness? The memory still haunts us, and the question remains unanswered, lurking in the shadows of that fateful night in Big Bend National Park. My name is Colton and I want to share with you an experience I had during a four-day backpacking trip in Glacier National Park. I had been planning this solo adventure for months, and as I ventured deeper into the rugged backcountry, my excitement continued to build. The wilderness embraced me, growing thicker and wilder with each step. The first day was absolutely fantastic. I set off at a steady pace, frequently stopping to capture the stunning vistas of sharp mountain peaks and jewel-toned lakes with my camera. As evening descended, I found the perfect spot to set up camp beside a babbling creek. The soothing sound of the water lulled me to sleep inside my little one-person tent. It was as peaceful and serene as it could possibly get. I couldn't have asked for a better day. The second day dawned clear and sunny, and I resumed my journey. I scrambled up switchbacks carved into the mountainsides, keeping a vigilant eye on the trail and the lookout for wildlife. As I climbed higher, the air grew cooler, and the trees became sparse. By late afternoon, I had reached the alpine tundra, a desolate landscape with patches of hardy wildflowers and lichen. I found a campsite nestled between two large boulders that shielded me from the wind and set up camp. After dinner, 
I bundled up and headed out to watch the sunset. I scrambled up to a small bluff to take in the breathtaking 360-degree views. The sky transitioned into dusky lavender as the sun dipped below the jagged horizon. It was a sight to behold. As darkness crept in, I gazed at the dazzling display of stars that adorned the night sky. A sense of complete calmness and peace washed over me. Eventually, the cold started to get to me, so I returned to my camp, crawled into my sleeping bag, and drifted off to sleep. Sometime later, I was jolted awake by a bone-chilling shriek that echoed all around me. The sound was unlike anything I'd ever heard before, high-pitched and warbling, almost like a woman screaming in a strange and unusual vibrato. I sat bolt upright inside my tent, my pulse racing, struggling to steady my shaking hands as I fumbled for my headlamp. I swept the harsh LED beam around, but the inky darkness revealed nothing. The night was eerily still, save for my own breaths. Sleep eluded me, even though I tried to convince myself it must have been a cougar or a coyote making that horrible noise. Morning came, gray and overcast, and I broke camp early, feeling unnerved by the complete and absolute solitude that surrounded me. The terrain grew steeper, and I slogged uphill through the rain, which collected in my eyelashes. Fog obscured any clear path forward. Suddenly, an intensely foul sulfurous odor washed over me, seeming to emanate from the very fog itself. I gagged and pulled my shirt up over my nose as my eyes burned and watered. Blinking through the tears, I realized with horror that a dark human figure had emerged from the mist, mere feet in front of me. What I saw was something out of a nightmare. Twisted horns curled back from its elongated skull, and its skin resembled burnt human flesh. Yellow eyes with slitted pupils bore into me, devoid of any warmth or emotion. Time seemed to come to a stop, fear gripping every fiber of my being. My feet were rooted helplessly in place, and all I could do was stare into the grotesque face. A scream caught in my throat as the creature's lipless mouth gaped open, revealing rows of pointed fangs. It stepped forward, a clawed hand outstretched, emitting a guttural growl from its deep chest. In sheer desperation and terror, I was flooded with adrenaline. Without thinking, my body reacted, and I turned on my heels, hurtling back down the slippery slope. My pace was reckless, and I risked serious injury with each stride. The frigid tendrils of fog licked at my back as I ran. After what felt like an eternity, I dared to glance behind me. There was nothing but mist, but I kept running, not stopping until I came across a family of hikers several miles down the trail. I was so overcome with fear and emotion that I began babbling incoherently about what had chased me. I nearly collapsed from exhaustion and relief. That was my last backpacking trip, and I still have severe nightmares about whatever that nightmare from the fog was. No one else seems to believe my tale, not even my closest friends and family. But I swear what I saw was real, a physical being, not something from a dream or the supernatural. I count myself lucky to have escaped that mountain alive. As I looked out over the expanse of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, a sense of calm washed over me. This place, with its sprawling forests and majestic peaks, had always been a sanctuary for me. Since I was a kid, these mountains had been my playground, my escape. I grew up here, learned to track deer, build a fire, and respect the wild. My dad used to say, Roy, the woods are like a good friend. They know all your secrets but never tell a soul. He was right. I was here with my buddies for our annual backpacking trip. There's something about the ritual of it, the way we meticulously plan each detail, that I find comforting. We'd chosen a spot near Takauchi Cove this time, a place I hadn't explored much. It promised challenging trails and breathtaking views, just what we needed. We started our ascent early in the morning, the air crisp and cool, filled with the scent of pine and earth. The path was rugged, winding its way through dense forests and over trickling streams. I've always loved the way light filters through the trees in these woods, casting dappled shadows on the ground. 
It's like walking through a patchwork of light and dark. We reached the clearing on the ridge by late afternoon. It was as magnificent as we'd hoped, offering an unobstructed view of the Tennessee River Valley. Below us, the cove stretched out, a verdant blanket dotted with deer and wild turkeys. We set up camp, the familiar routine of pitching tents and gathering firewood unfolding effortlessly. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the sky transformed into a canvas of purples and oranges. We sat around the fire, sharing stories and laughter, the kind of easy camaraderie that comes from years of friendship. But as the night grew deeper and the fire dwindled to embers, an unsettling stillness settled over the campsite. I was the first to turn in, my body aching pleasantly from the day's hike. Sleep, however, proved elusive. I tossed and turned in my sleeping bag, the silence of the woods pressing in on me. It was well past midnight when I heard it, a chilling, raspy scream that cut through the night air. It sounded close, maybe too close. I lay there, heart pounding, trying to convince myself it was just a bobcat or a panther. But deep down, I knew it wasn't. The sound was different, guttural, almost like a croak, but infused with a kind of malice I'd never heard before. I fumbled for my flashlight, unzipped the tent, and shone the light towards the trees. Nothing but darkness and the thick trunks of pines stared back at me. For a moment, I considered waking the others, but what would I say? That I got spooked by a strange noise? I was Roy, the outdoorsman, the guy who didn't rattle easily. So, I zipped up the tent telling myself it was nothing, just the wilderness playing tricks on me. I eventually drifted off to a restless sleep, the sound still echoing in my mind. When morning came, with its soft light and bird songs, the terror of the night felt like a distant dream. But as I sat there, sipping my coffee and watching the sun climb higher, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had changed. The woods no longer felt like an old friend. They had become a mystery, a place holding secrets I wasn't sure I wanted to uncover. The morning after the disturbance was like a scene straight from a painting. The sun filtering through the trees, the air fresh with the scent of dew. Despite the beauty, I couldn't shake off the unease from last night's incident. Over breakfast, I mentioned the strange noise to the guys, but they just shrugged it off. They'd slept like logs, undisturbed. I let the topic drop, not wanting to sound paranoid, but inside, my gut was tight with anxiety. We decided to take a different trail back, one less traveled, snaking steeply down to the valley. I led the way, my mind still replaying the previous night's events. The trail was narrow, flanked by thick underbrush and towering trees, the kind of place that makes you feel both insignificant and intensely alive. I've always believed that the wilderness speaks in its own language, and I've spent enough time in these mountains to understand it. But today, it felt like the forest was holding its breath, waiting. The cracking of branches ahead snapped me out of my reverie. Instantly I was alert, my hand instinctively going to the knife on my belt. Bear country, you can never be too careful. I slowed my pace, straining my ears for any more sounds. The forest was silent again, the kind of silence that screams. And then, I saw it. About thirty feet ahead, something emerged onto the trail. My first thought was a bear, but as my eyes adjusted, I realized this was no bear. It stood on two legs, tall and gaunt, with a coat of dark fur. The head was elongated, almost canine, with what looked like horns, yes, horns, protruding from its skull. It was like nothing I'd ever seen, a creature straight out of a nightmare. Our eyes locked, and for a moment, time stood still. There was an intelligence in its gaze, a chilling sentience. Fear gripped me, not just of the creature, but of the unknown, of the realization that there are things in this world beyond our understanding. Then, as quickly as it appeared, the creature turned and vanished into the underbrush. The silence was broken by the sound of my own ragged breathing. I stood there, trying to make sense of what I'd just seen. When my friends caught up, I told them about the creature. They laughed it off, joking that the mountain air had gotten to me, that I was seeing things. 
Part of me wanted to believe them, to write it off as a trick of the light, or a hallucination. But I knew what I saw. I've spent my life in these woods, and I know every deer, every bear, every bird. This was something else, something not of this world. The skepticism I'd always prided myself on was now a crumbled facade. The hike back was a blur. My mind was elsewhere, grappling with the impossible. As we loaded up the truck and drove away from the park, I kept glancing back at the dense forest, half expecting to see that creature watching us from the tree line. I've always believed the woods held secrets, but now I wasn't sure I wanted to uncover them. That encounter changed something fundamental in me. The wilderness was no longer just a place of beauty and solitude. It was a reminder of the mysteries that lurk in the shadows, of the thin veil between our world and the unknown. The drive back from the Smokies was quieter than usual. My mind kept replaying the encounter, each detail etched vividly in my memory. The creature's haunting eyes, the way it moved. It was all so surreal, yet undeniably real. The guys chatted about the trip, but I was distant, lost in thought. Back home, the familiar surroundings of my house felt strangely alien. I was no longer the man who left for the mountains. That encounter had changed me. I found myself staring out the window, my eyes unconsciously searching the tree line for something, anything, that could explain what I'd seen. The days that followed were a struggle. I tried to push the incident to the back of my mind, to convince myself it was just a figment of my imagination. But deep down, I knew it wasn't. I had seen something that defied explanation, something that challenged my understanding of the natural world. I began to research, diving into folklore and accounts of cryptids, searching for anything that resembled what I'd seen. The more I read, the more I realized how many stories there were of creatures and phenomena that science couldn't explain. I had always dismissed such tales as fanciful myths. Now, I wasn't so sure. One evening, I decided to share my experience online. I wrote about the encounter in detail, expecting ridicule or disbelief. Instead, I was met with a wave of responses from people who had experienced similar phenomena. Their stories, so different yet so similar to mine, were a comfort. I wasn't alone in this. The encounter in the Smokies had shattered my skepticism. I found myself more open to the experiences of others, no longer quick to dismiss the unexplainable. I had always prided myself on my rationality, my groundedness. But now, I realized that there was so much more to this world than what meets the eye. Months passed, and the intensity of the experience faded, but it never left me. I continued to hike and explore, but with a newfound respect for the wilderness and its mysteries. I no longer saw the forest as just trees and wildlife. It was a living, breathing entity, full of secrets and wonders. One day, I returned to the same trail in the Smokies. I hiked to the spot where I had seen the creature, half hoping, half fearing to encounter it again. But there was nothing, just the rustle of leaves and the distant call of a bird. As I stood there, I realized that my perception of the world had irrevocably changed. The encounter had opened my eyes to the possibility of the unknown, the unexplained. It had humbled me, reminded me of our place in this vast, mysterious universe. I left the Smokies that day with a sense of peace. I knew that there were things out there beyond our understanding, and that was okay. The world was richer, more mysterious, and more beautiful for it. And I, Roy, once a skeptic, was now a believer, not just in the supernatural, but in the endless possibilities of our world. I've always been drawn to the wild, the uncharted corners of the earth where nature speaks louder than the hum of city life. That's why, when I found myself standing at the threshold of Yosemite National Park, my heart was pounding with excitement. I, Mateo, a self-proclaimed nature enthusiast, was about to embark on a journey through one of the most breathtaking landscapes in the world. The morning air was crisp, filled with the scent of pine and earth. I adjusted my backpack, filled with all the essentials, water, snacks, a first aid kit, and of course, 
my trusted camera. I had planned this hike for months, poring over maps and trail guides, but nothing could prepare me for the sheer beauty that lay before me. As I started down the trail, the early sunlight filtered through the towering trees, casting a golden glow on the path. Birds chirped in the canopy above, and a gentle breeze rustled the leaves. I felt a deep sense of peace, a connection to the earth that I only found in places like this. Yosemite was more than just a park. It was a sanctuary, a haven for creatures big and small. And now, for a brief time, it was mine too. The further I hiked, the more the scenery changed. I passed by crystal clear streams, their waters babbling over smooth rocks. I climbed rocky outcrops, each offering a new, breathtaking view of the valley below. I snapped pictures trying to capture the beauty, but photos could never do justice to the feeling of being there, of being part of something so vast and timeless. Occasionally I crossed paths with other hikers, exchanging brief smiles and nods. But for the most part, I was alone with my thoughts, the only human in a vast expanse of wilderness. It was both humbling and exhilarating. As the day wore on, the trail led me deeper into the heart of Yosemite. The crowds thinned until it was just me and the wild. It was in these quiet moments that I felt a strange sensation, as if I wasn't completely alone. I would catch a flicker of movement in the corner of my eye, or hear a rustle that wasn't quite in tune with the natural sounds around me. It was probably just wildlife, I told myself but a small part of me couldn't shake off the feeling that it was something else, something watching me. I pushed these thoughts aside, focusing on the beauty around me. Every turn in the trail revealed a new wonder, a meadow carpeted with wildflowers, a distant waterfall cascading down a cliff face, a sudden clearing that offered a panoramic view of the park. I was in awe of the majesty of nature, of the serenity that enveloped me. As the sun began to dip towards the horizon, painting the sky in shades of orange and pink, I found a quiet spot to rest. I sat there, taking in the vastness, the sheer grandeur of Yosemite. In that moment, I felt a deep connection to the earth, a sense of belonging that I had never felt in the city. But as the shadows lengthened, that strange feeling of being watched returned. I shook off the unease reminding myself that I was in one of the most well-known national parks, not some untamed wilderness. Yet, as I packed up to head back, I couldn't shake the feeling that something out there, hidden in the depths of Yosemite, was waiting for me. The morning after my first day in Yosemite, I woke up with a mix of excitement and trepidation. Despite the unsettling feeling from yesterday, I was determined to delve deeper into the park. Today's trail promised to lead me into more secluded areas, far from the well-trodden paths near the entrance. As I ventured further, the sounds of civilization faded, replaced by the pure, undisturbed chorus of nature. The air grew denser, filled with the earthy scent of untouched wilderness. Every step took me deeper into the heart of Yosemite, into a world that felt ancient and unexplored. It was mid-morning when I first sensed something was off. The forest, usually teeming with the sounds of wildlife, had fallen eerily silent. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and a chill ran down my spine. I stopped, listening intently, but all I could hear was my own heartbeat, loud in the stillness. Then I saw it. Not far off the path there was a large creature, hunched over something on the ground. At first I thought it was a bear, but as I squinted through the trees, I realized it was unlike any animal I had ever seen. It was enormous, resembling a hyena, but there was something about its stature that was more sinister, more foreboding. Frozen in place, I watched in a mix of horror and fascination. The creature was easily six feet tall at the shoulder and about eight feet long. Its fur was matted and unkempt, and it seemed to be feeding on... something... I didn't dare move closer to find out. For a moment, everything was still. Then, without warning, the creature raised its head and our eyes locked. Its gaze was piercing, almost human, and it let out a low, guttural growl that reverberated through the forest. My heart was pounding in my chest, every instinct telling me to run, but I couldn't move. 
I was trapped in the creature's hypnotic stare, a primal fear rooting me to the spot. Then, as suddenly as our encounter began, the creature turned and vanished into the trees with a grace that belied its size. I stood there for what felt like an eternity, trying to process what had just happened. My mind raced with questions. What was that creature? How could something like that exist here, in Yosemite, without anyone knowing? With a shaky breath I forced myself to move. I needed to get out of there, to get back to safety. I retraced my steps, moving as quickly as I could without running. Every rustle in the bushes, every snap of a twig, sent a jolt of fear through me. I felt exposed, vulnerable, like prey in an unknown predator's territory. The walk back to my car was a blur of panic and confusion. The once peaceful forest now felt oppressive, filled with hidden dangers. Every once in a while I glanced over my shoulder, half expecting to see that creature following me. When I finally reached my car, I locked the doors and sat there trying to calm my racing heart. The image of the beast was burned into my mind, its eerie growl echoing in my ears. I knew I had to tell someone, to report what I had seen, but a part of me feared they wouldn't believe me. How could they? I could barely believe it myself. As I drove away from Yosemite, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had stumbled upon something extraordinary something that would change my understanding of the natural world forever. I sat in my car for a long time, parked just outside Yosemite, struggling to make sense of what I had seen. The drive back to civilization felt surreal, as if I was moving between two different worlds, the familiar everyday life and the mysterious, unknown depths of the wilderness I had just left. Back in my small apartment, the walls felt too close, too confining after the expansiveness of the park. I tossed and turned that night, the image of the creature haunting my dreams. It was unlike anything I'd ever known or read about, a being that seemed to belong more to myth than reality. The next morning, I made my way to the park office. My hands were shaking slightly as I recounted my encounter to the rangers. I expected skepticism, but their outright disbelief stung. They listened politely, but I could see the doubt in their eyes. They suggested it might have been a bear, or perhaps my imagination, heightened by being alone in the wilderness. But I knew what I had seen. It was real, as real as anything I'd ever experienced. I spent the next few days trying to find any information that could explain my encounter. I scoured the internet, visited the local library, and even reached out to wildlife experts and biologists. I found tales of mythical creatures and legends of the area, but nothing that matched the creature I had seen. The lack of answers was frustrating, but worse was the feeling of isolation that crept over me. My friends and family listened to my story with a mix of amusement and concern, but I could tell they didn't believe me. They joked about it, calling me Mateo the Monster Hunter. I tried to laugh along, but deep down, I felt a growing sense of loneliness. It was as if I had seen something that had put me out of step with the rest of the world. My nights were restless, filled with dreams of the creature. I saw its piercing black eyes in every shadow, heard its growl in every creak of my apartment. I became jumpy, on edge, as if part of me was still out there in the forest, waiting for the creature to appear again. I began to question my own sanity. Had I really seen what I thought I had? Or had the solitude in the wilderness played tricks on my mind? The uncertainty was maddening. I wanted to go back to find proof of the creature's existence, but fear held me back. What if it was dangerous? What if I wasn't so lucky next time? As the days passed, I found myself withdrawing more and more. I spent hours staring at my photos of Yosemite, looking for any sign of the creature, any clue that I hadn't imagined at all. But there was nothing just beautiful landscapes and memories of a time before my world had been turned upside down. I realized that this encounter had changed me. I had always sought answers, always believed that with enough determination, I could understand the mysteries of the natural world. But now, I was faced with a mystery that might never be solved, a question that might never be answered. And as much as it scared me, it also fascinated me, 
There was more to this world than I had ever imagined, more wonders and terrors lurking just out of sight. In the end, I knew one thing for sure, I couldn't let this go. I had to find out what that creature was, even if it meant stepping back into the unknown. The thought was terrifying, but also exhilarating. There was a mystery out there in the wilderness, and I was determined to unravel it. Days turned into weeks since my encounter in Yosemite, and the image of the creature lingered in my mind like a shadow. I couldn't shake it off. It became a part of my daily life, an obsession that I couldn't ignore. So I decided to go back to Yosemite, to the very spot where I had seen the creature. I needed closure, or at least another clue to what it was. Returning to the park felt different this time. The awe and excitement I had felt on my first visit were replaced by a sense of purpose, and yes, a bit of fear. I kept my eyes peeled, half expecting to see the creature at every turn. But there was nothing, just the rustling of leaves and the distant call of birds. I reached the spot where I had seen it, my heart racing with anticipation. But there was nothing out of the ordinary, no signs that a creature of such size had ever been there. No tracks, no broken branches, nothing. I felt a mix of disappointment and relief. Part of me had hoped to see it again, to prove to myself and others that I wasn't crazy. But another part of me was glad it wasn't there. The fear I had felt during our first encounter was still fresh in my mind. I spent the day wandering around the area, searching for any evidence of the creature's existence. But as the sun began to set, I had to face the hard truth. There was no proof. It was as if the creature had vanished into thin air, a ghost in the wilderness. That night, as I lay in my tent, I realized that my quest for answers might be in vain. The world was full of mysteries, some of which might never be solved. It was a humbling thought, but also a liberating one. The unknown added a layer of mystery and wonder to the natural world, a reminder that we are not the masters of this planet, but merely a part of it. In the following days, I tried to put the creature out of my mind. I returned to my routine, but something had shifted inside me. I no longer looked at the world in the same way. There was more to it than I had ever imagined, more mysteries hidden in the shadows and the unseen corners of the earth. I realized that this experience had changed me. I was no longer the same person who had entered Yosemite that first day. I had come face to face with the unknown, and it had opened my eyes to the wonders and mysteries of the natural world. I found a new respect for nature, a deeper appreciation for its complexities and its mysteries. And so I decided to embrace the unknown. I continued to hike, to explore, but with a new perspective. I no longer sought to understand everything I encountered. Instead, I learned to appreciate the mystery, to revel in the wonder of not knowing. It was a freeing feeling to accept that some things were beyond my comprehension. The creature, whatever it was, remained a mystery. But it had given me a gift, the realization that the world was larger, more mysterious, and more wonderful than I had ever imagined. And for that, I was grateful. The sun was just cresting the horizon when I steered my old jeep onto the narrow dirt road leading into Yim National Park. There's something about the early morning in the wilderness, a pristine silence, broken only by the distant call of a hawk or the rustle of wind through the trees, that always set my soul at ease. I've been a solitary man for most of my life, finding my peace not in crowded bars or bustling city streets, but in the untouched corners of the world where nature speaks in whispers and roars. As the jeep bumped along, I couldn't help but think of how these trips had become my sanctuary. The park, known for its dense forests and the tranquil waters of its secluded lake, had always been a favorite. I pulled up to the trailhead, the first rays of sunlight filtering through the pines, turning the dew-drenched spiderwebs into shimmering works of art. I took a deep breath of the crisp morning air, laced with the scent of pine and damp earth, and shouldered my pack. The trail was familiar, like an old friend. It wound through towering trees and crossed babbling brooks, each step taking me deeper into the embrace of the wild. 
I moved with an easy rhythm, my boots crunching softly on the forest floor, my eyes drinking in the green canopy above and the vibrant life that thrived beneath it. Birds flitted from branch to branch, and I spotted a deer watching me curiously from the underbrush before it bounded away. After a few hours of hiking, I arrived at the lake. It was a hidden gem, nestled in the heart of the park, its waters still and clear as glass. The lake was like a mirror, reflecting the perfect blue of the sky and the surrounding hills, so green they almost seemed to be glowing with their own inner light. I walked to the water's edge, setting down my pack, and sat on a fallen log. The serenity of the place was palpable. It was moments like these that I lived for, where the world fell away and all that remained was the beauty of the untouched wild. I watched a fish leap from the water, creating ripples that disturbed the perfect reflection, a reminder that even in stillness, life was always moving, always changing. I had planned to camp near the lake for the night, to spend the evening watching the stars reflect on its surface and listening to the nocturnal symphony of the forest. I was lost in these thoughts when a sudden subtle movement in the water caught my eye. It was nothing more than a ripple, but in the stillness of the lake, it was as conspicuous as a shout in a library. Curiosity peaked, I stood up, my gaze fixed on the spot where I had seen the movement. It was probably just a fish, I reasoned, or maybe a turtle. But as I watched, waiting for the lake to return to its undisturbed state, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The wilderness had a way of speaking to you, of sending signals through the rustle of leaves or the ripple of water. And right now, it was whispering a warning. The stillness of the lake was a canvas, and the slightest disturbance a stroke of unexpected color. I leaned forward, my hands resting on my knees, as I strained to see through the mirror-like surface. The forest around me held its breath, the usual chorus of bird calls and rustling leaves falling eerily silent. Then it happened again, a ripple, more pronounced this time, followed by a bubbling near the center of the lake. My heart quickened. Not a fish. Not this time. The water broke, and an arm emerged, massive and covered in matted wet fur. My mind raced to find a rational explanation, but came up empty. The arm was followed by another, equally enormous and just as bizarre, clutching at the rocks along the shore with clawed hands. I should have run, but my feet were rooted to the spot, as if the earth itself held me there. The creature heaved itself out of the water, and for a moment, time seemed to stand still. It was towering, easily over eight feet tall, its body a mass of muscle and tangled fur. Water cascaded off its form, catching the light and creating a halo of droplets around it. Its face, oh god, its face. It was something out of a nightmare, a primal throwback with a resemblance to a baboon, but far more terrifying black reddish eyes that seemed to bore into my very soul, and a mouth full of sharp fangs that gleamed with a malevolent light. And yet, its expression wasn't one of aggression, but annoyance, as if I had interrupted some ancient ritual. The creature stood upright, a towering figure that blocked out the sun and cast a shadow that fell over me, cold and ominous. For a fleeting second, our eyes locked, and in that gaze, I felt an overwhelming sense of intrusion, as if I was the trespasser in this forgotten corner of the world. Then, as quickly as it had appeared, the creature dropped to all fours and lumbered into the dense forest, disappearing into the shadows. The spell was broken, and I gasped for air, my lungs burning. My legs trembled, and I collapsed onto the ground, my mind struggling to process what I had just witnessed. It was like a scene from those old video games I used to play as a kid, Primal Rage. But this was no pixelated fantasy. This was real. Too real. I sat there for what felt like hours, my eyes fixed on the spot where the creature had vanished, half expecting it to re-emerge. Eventually I stood up, my body still shaking. The serene beauty of the park had transformed into something wild and unknowable. I picked up my pack with hands that were not quite my own and started back towards my camp, each step heavy with a newfound awareness of the mysteries that lay hidden in these woods. As I walked, the sounds of the forest slowly returned, but they were different now, no longer just the innocent calls of nature, 
but whispers of unseen eyes watching, of secrets buried deep in the heart of Yim National Park. The walk back to my camp was a blur, my mind racing as fast as my heart. Every shadow in the trees, every rustle in the underbrush, sent a jolt of fear through me. The encounter at the lake replayed in my head on an endless loop, each detail etched into my memory with startling clarity. Reaching my camp, I dropped my pack and sat down hard on the nearest log. My hands were still trembling. I felt like a stranger in a place I had once considered a second home. The woods around me, once a sanctuary, now felt foreign and threatening. I didn't sleep that night. The fire I built was more for comfort than warmth, its flickering flames casting dancing shadows that only served to heighten my anxiety. Every crackle of burning wood, every hoot of an owl, kept me on edge. I was trapped in a state of hyper-awareness, my senses attuned to every possible threat. When dawn broke, I packed up my camp with mechanical efficiency. I needed to leave, to get away from the lake and its hidden depths. But even as I hiked out of the park, the image of the creature haunted me. I couldn't shake the feeling that its eyes were still on me, watching from the darkness of the forest. Back in civilization, I threw myself into research. I scoured the internet for any mention of creatures like the one I had seen. I visited the local library, poring over folklore and legends of the area. The more I read, the more convinced I became that I had encountered something extraordinary, something unexplained. The stories varied. Tales of Bigfoot-like creatures, ancient spirits of the woods, even alien beings. But none matched exactly what I had seen. The creature from the lake was unique, a being out of time and place, as if it had stepped out of a forgotten world into ours. My obsession grew. I mapped out sightings, trying to find a pattern or explanation. I reached out to experts in cryptozoology and folklore, only to be met with skepticism or outright disbelief. I felt isolated in my quest, a lone voice trying to make sense of the impossible. But even as I searched for answers, a part of me dreaded what I might find. There's a comfort in the unknown, in the mysteries that remain unsolved. To explain the creature would be to diminish its power, to reduce the sublime terror of that moment at the lake to something mundane. So I continued my hikes, drawn back to the wilderness time and again. But I never returned to that lake. The memory of what I had seen there was too raw, too vivid. The park was still my refuge, but it was a changed place, tinged with a sense of unease and wonder. I knew I would never forget my encounter with the creature. It had marked me in some intangible way, a reminder that the world is bigger and stranger than we can ever fully understand. And maybe that's the way it should be. In the wild, there are things beyond our comprehension, mysteries that are meant to stay hidden in the shadows of the trees. The wilderness never really leaves you, not once it's etched its way into your soul. I kept going back to Yim National Park, drawn by a force I couldn't explain. The forest, with its endless mysteries and ancient whispers, had become a part of me. But I never went near that lake again. There are some places, once touched by the inexplicable, that remain sacred, forbidden. I hiked different trails, explored new areas, but the shadow of that encounter was always with me, lurking just beneath the surface of my thoughts. The creature from the lake had opened my eyes to a world I had never imagined, a world where the lines between myth and reality blurred. I found solace in the solitude of the woods, a solace that was now tinged with a respectful wariness. I was more observant, more attuned to the subtleties of the natural world around me. Every rustling leaf, every snapped twig, held the potential for wonder or terror. The wilderness was no longer just a place of beauty and peace. It was a realm of unknowns, a place where anything was possible. As the seasons changed, so did I. The experience had altered me in ways I couldn't fully articulate. I had always respected nature, but now there was an added layer of reverence, a deeper understanding of its power and mystery. I became more introspective, often lost in thought as I walked the familiar trails. I shared my story with a few close friends, but their reactions were mixed. Some were skeptical, others intrigued. 
but none could truly grasp the magnitude of what I had experienced. It was a story that had no place in the rational world, a tale that belonged to the realm of legends. Sometimes I would find myself gazing at the forest, wondering if the creature was out there, watching me as I had watched it. The thought was both unsettling and exhilarating. In that moment of our encounter, we had shared something profound, a connection that transcended language and understanding. As I hiked, I often found myself stopping to look around, half expecting to see the creature emerge from the trees. But it never did. Perhaps it was just a chance encounter, a fleeting glimpse into a hidden world. Or maybe it was a warning, a reminder of the mysteries that lay in wait in the unexplored corners of the earth. The park remained my refuge, but it was a different place now. It was a place where the veil between the known and the unknown was thin, where the legends of old seemed not just plausible, but real. In the end, I accepted that some mysteries were not meant to be solved. The creature from the lake would remain a part of the park's lore, a story whispered around campfires and pondered in the silent hours of the night. For me, it was a memory, a moment in time that had changed my perception of the world. As I stood on a ridge overlooking the expanse of the park, the setting sun casting long shadows over the landscape, I felt a deep sense of peace. The wilderness was still my sanctuary, a place of endless wonders and timeless secrets. And I knew, as long as there were places like this, wild and untamed, the spirit of the creature would always be there, roaming free in the depths of the forest, a guardian of the mysteries of the natural world. I've always felt at home in the vast wilderness of Yellowstone National Park. Being a park ranger here for a decade, I've come to know these lands like the back of my hand. Tonight, like many nights before, I was on my evening patrol. It was around 9.30 p.m., and the dusk had set in, painting the sky in shades of purple and orange. I decided to take the old fire access road that cut through the lodgepole pine forest, leading towards the Madison River. This area was a part of the park where elk and moose were commonly seen at dusk, grazing in the meadow. The full moon hung low in the sky, casting a pale light over the landscape, giving just enough visibility so I didn't have to rely solely on my truck's headlights. As I drove along, the calmness of the park was soothing. The gentle rustle of the pines and the distant sound of the river were familiar and comforting. I remember thinking how lucky I was to have a job that allowed me to be in such a beautiful place every day. Suddenly, my truck's headlights caught something near the tree line at the edge of the meadow. I slammed on the brakes, my heart pounding in my chest. There, standing in the clearing, was a massive figure. For a moment, I was frozen, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. It was an upright creature, resembling a canine, but unlike anything I had ever seen. It stood at least ten feet tall, its torso swaying slightly from side to side. Its fur was shaggy, and even from a distance, I could see its powerful wolf-like hind legs and sharp talons. What struck me the most were its front limbs, which seemed oddly human-like in proportion, contrasting starkly with its animalistic hindquarters. The creature's head was shadowed, making it difficult to discern any facial features. For a brief moment, I thought I was looking at some bizarre form of bear, but I quickly realized this was no ordinary animal. My heart raced as I cautiously drew my firearm, keeping it ready, just in case. I slowly began to reverse my truck, not wanting to turn my back on the creature. To my relief, it didn't pursue me, but just swayed in place, as if curious about my presence. I couldn't shake off the feeling that it was studying me just as intently as I was studying it. Once I felt I had put a safe distance between myself and the creature, I stopped to catch my breath. My mind raced with questions. What was that thing? Was it dangerous? Had anyone else seen it before? I reported the sighting over the radio, trying to keep my voice steady. I knew my report would raise eyebrows, maybe even concerns, but I had to let the others know. For now, I vowed to myself to stick to daylight patrols on this road. The image of the creature lingered in my mind as I drove away, 
a chilling reminder of the unknown entities that might roam the wilderness of Yellowstone. As I finished my patrol that night, the encounter weighed heavily on me. The park had always been my sanctuary, a place of natural beauty and order, but now it felt like a veil had been lifted, revealing a hidden, mysterious layer that I had never known. This was just the beginning of a mystery that would haunt me for a long time. That night, as I lay in bed, the image of the creature wouldn't leave my mind. It was like nothing I had ever seen before in my ten years as a park ranger in Yellowstone. I couldn't shake off the feeling of unease, the way its shadowy figure loomed in the moonlight, its massive size making it seem almost otherworldly. The next morning I found myself driving back to the spot where I had seen the creature. The daylight made everything look different, less ominous, but the memory of last night was still fresh. I parked my truck near the meadow and stepped out, scanning the tree line where I had seen it. The creature was tall, easily towering over any bear I'd ever encountered. Its shaggy fur looked rough and unkempt, blending into the dark backdrop of the forest. I remembered how its torso seemed to pivot, almost as if it was ready to charge or run. But the most unsettling part was its limbs. The hind legs were powerful and wolf-like, ending in sharp, menacing talons. In stark contrast, its front limbs were oddly human-like, longer and more proportionate to a human's arms than any animal's legs. Its head was what puzzled me the most. Even now, in the safety of daylight, I couldn't picture it clearly. The way the shadows had played under the moonlight made it difficult to discern any features. Was it a wolf's head or something else? I walked around the meadow, looking for any signs or tracks. But the ground was hard, and if the creature had left any traces, they were gone now. I felt a mix of frustration and relief. Part of me wanted to prove to myself that I hadn't imagined it. But another part was glad there was no evidence of something so frightening lurking around. As I returned to my truck, I kept glancing back at the forest line. The rational part of me thought I might have overreacted. Maybe it was just a bear standing in a weird way, or my eyes playing tricks on me in the dim light. But the memory of how it swayed, its silhouette against the trees, was too vivid to dismiss. Back at the ranger station, I reported what I had seen, trying to sound as logical and unshaken as possible. I could tell by their faces that some of my colleagues were skeptical. Probably just a bear, you know how they can look in the dark, one suggested. But I knew what I saw wasn't any bear. Over the next few days, I spent my time diving into books and online resources, researching local wildlife, legends, and any similar sightings. I found stories of mysterious creatures in forests around the world, legends that had been passed down for generations, but nothing that matched what I had seen. The more I searched, the more the mystery deepened. What was that creature? Why had I never seen or heard of anything like it before in Yellowstone? The park was my home, a place I thought I knew inside and out. But now, I felt like a stranger, treading cautiously in a land where unknown beings might dwell just beyond the next turn. The days following my encounter with the mysterious creature were filled with a mix of curiosity and unease. At the ranger station, my report had stirred a buzz of skepticism and intrigue. Some colleagues joked about it, while others suggested it could have been a trick of the light or just a misidentified animal. But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that what I had seen was real, something unexplained. I continued my patrols, now strictly during daylight hours. Each time I passed the meadow where I had seen the creature, a chill would run down my spine. I kept my eyes peeled for any signs, but the forest remained as serene and undisturbed as ever. Determined to find some answers, I started to delve deeper into research. I spent my evenings poring over books on local wildlife, trying to find anything that resembled what I had seen. I even dug into folklore and myths from the region, wondering if perhaps what I saw was a creature of legend, something beyond the ordinary. My search led me to stories of creatures in Native American lore that resembled what I had seen, but none fit perfectly. I also found accounts of mysterious sightings in other national parks, but again, nothing quite matched up. 
It was as if the creature I encountered was unique, a lone mystery in the vast wilderness of Yellowstone. Feeling a bit discouraged, I decided to reach out to a few experts in wildlife biology and zoology. I sent emails, describing the creature as best as I could, hoping someone might have heard of something similar. The responses were a mix of polite dismissals and intrigued curiosity, but no concrete answers. One evening, as I sat in my cabin, going over notes and emails, I realized that this investigation was becoming more than just a search for answers. It was a journey into the unknown, a challenge to my understanding of the natural world. Yellowstone, a place I thought I knew like the back of my hand, now seemed like a land with hidden depths, holding secrets yet to be discovered. The lack of answers was frustrating, but it also filled me with a sense of wonder. What other mysteries did the park hold? What other unknown creatures could be lurking in its vast wilderness? The thought was both terrifying and exhilarating. As the days turned into weeks, the buzz about my encounter at the ranger station slowly died down. Life returned to normal, but the experience had changed something in me. I looked at the park with new eyes, with a respect and caution for the unknown. I continued my patrols, keeping a watchful eye on the forest and meadows. The creature never appeared again, and no further signs of it were ever found. But the memory of that night stayed with me, a constant reminder of the mysteries hidden in the natural world. The encounter with the mysterious creature had opened a door to a world I had never imagined, a world where the unknown roamed free in the shadows of the trees. It was a world I was now a part of, and I knew my journey to understand it had only just begun. Months have passed since the night I saw the mysterious creature in Yellowstone, but not a day goes by without me thinking about it. The encounter has left a lasting impression on me, altering the way I view the wilderness I once thought I knew so well. I continued my regular patrols in the park, the normalcy of my duties contrasting sharply with the lingering thoughts of that strange, unexplained creature. The area around the meadow where I had seen it became a place of fascination and apprehension. I found myself glancing over in its direction, half expecting to see the creature again, but it never reappeared. My colleagues at the ranger station had mostly forgotten about the incident, absorbed in their day-to-day -day responsibilities. But for me, the encounter was a constant presence, an unsolved mystery that I couldn't let go of. I kept the file open, adding notes, sketches, and theories, anything that might help make sense of what I saw. As time went by, I began to feel a sense of isolation with my experience. I wondered why the creature had appeared to me and what it was. Was I meant to see it? Was there a purpose or a message behind the encounter? These questions swirled in my mind with no clear answers. I started spending my free time exploring other parts of the park, areas I hadn't paid much attention to before. I hoped to find some clue, some sign that would lead me back to the creature, or at least help me understand it better. But all I found was the immense beauty and complexity of Yellowstone, a reminder of how little we truly know about the natural world. In my quest for answers, I had conversations with park visitors, sharing stories and listening to their experiences. Some had their own tales of unexplained sightings and strange occurrences in the park. Each story added to the tapestry of mystery that seemed to envelop Yellowstone. The park, with its geysers, wildlife, and stunning landscapes, has always been a place of wonder. But now, it felt like a living, breathing entity, full of secrets and ancient stories. The creature, whatever it was, seemed to be a part of this hidden world, a guardian of the wilderness that had briefly crossed into mine. Despite the lack of concrete evidence or sightings, the creature remained a significant part of my life. It had opened my eyes to the possibilities of the unknown and had made me more aware of my surroundings. I had developed a deeper respect for the park and its many mysteries. In the end, the creature became a symbol of the untamed and unexplored aspects of nature. It reminded me that there are things beyond our understanding, wonders and mysteries that lie just beyond our reach. As I continued my work as a ranger, I carried the experience with me, a personal reminder of the wild and mysterious heart of Yellowstone. The encounter had changed me, 
making me more thoughtful, more curious, and more appreciative of the natural world around me. The mystery of the creature, unsolved and elusive, remained a part of the park's lore and a part of me. It was a story I would carry with me always, a tale of the wild and the unknown, a reminder that we share this world with wonders beyond our comprehension.